Welcome to Bethlehem Lutheran Church services for June 26, 2022. Uh, it's been a warm, warm week, and that's why there is no robe on me. It's been hot. So I hope you're staying cool and just keep thinking back to those 30 below days that we just came from. Hope all is well in your world. Now let us take a second to stop, calm ourselves, before we start to worship our Lord. We gather together as a community of faith, the church living in and outside of this building, in the name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now let us confess our sins and be forgiven. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In this time of reflection, let us confess our sins silently in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and we cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in our thoughts. We have sinned against you in our words. We have sinned against you in our deeds, what we have done and what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, mind, and being, and we have not loved our neighbors, your children, as you have loved us. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your delight and will for creation and walk along the path that you walk and have set before us to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loves us even when we are dead in sin and makes us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Our psalm today is Psalm 77. It's verses 1 to 2 and 11 to 20. I cry aloud to God, aloud to God that he may hear me. In the day of my trouble, I seek the Lord. In the night, my hand is stretched out without wearying. My soul refuses to be comforted. I will call to mind the deeds of the Lord. I will remember your wonders of old. I will meditate on all your work and muse on your mighty deeds. Your way, O oh God, is holy. What God is so great as our God? You are the God who works wonders. You have displayed your might among the people. With your strong arm, you redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. And now let us have our prayer of the day. Holy God, our humanity is ever present to us. May we follow you closely on our daily journey and learn from the faithfulness of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. The scripture today comes from Luke, and it is Luke 9, chapter 9, verses 51 to 62. 
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him, but they did not receive him because his face was set towards Jerusalem. When his disciples, James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. By this time in the scriptures, Jesus is getting ready to prepare for the end, which he knew would come once he entered Jerusalem. You know, there would be confrontation, torture, death. He still had work to do, but he was so distracted by the events to come. So in this scripture, we have three guys, each supposedly wanting to follow Jesus, but Jesus saw through all three of them. Number one guy. He claims to want to follow Jesus wherever he goes. Jesus is letting them know, hey, following me is not easy. Um, we don't stay at Holiday Inns with indoor pools and free breakfasts. You know, our travels are nonstop. I, we don't have anywhere to call home. You know, there is no such thing as a coffee break. And Jesus looked into the heart of this man and he knows that constantly following Jesus is not something that man can do or is willing to do. The man wants comfort and Jesus didn't have that. So the first excuse given not to follow Jesus is that following Jesus is tough. Uh, it is not what that person expected, so he opted out. So, number two guy. Jesus says to this guy, follow me. Do you remember he actually gave the same command to Peter, Andrew, James, and John. And they dropped their nets and followed Jesus full time. He also gave the same command to Matthew. And Matthew left his life of tax collecting and followed Jesus. Jesus told a rich young ruler to follow me and the ruler did not as he did not want to give up his wealth and had other priorities. Jesus told Philip, follow me. And not only did he follow, but he brought along his friend Nathaniel to follow. Being a Christian means following Jesus. I mean, period, that's it. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. And number two guy on the surface has a pretty good reason not to follow Jesus immediately because he wants to go home to bury his father, and then he'll go follow Jesus. And in the, I, I mean, it sounds kind of harsh, but to be honest, it, it's putting his family first over Jesus. So the second excuse given not to follow Jesus is that following Jesus means he is the priority over all over relationships. And that's not what this man wanted, so he opted out. So number three guy loudly proclaims, I will follow you, but, okay, you know, his excuse 
doesn't sound bad either, does it? I mean, he wants to say goodbye to his family. And so why is this an issue? Well, once at home, this guy might be tempted to stay there and not leave. Or his mother would throw herself around his legs and say, don't leave me, son. Jesus encouraged the man to follow and not look back. Backwards is often can be temptation. So the third excuse given to follow Jesus means a total life change in all things. And that's not what this guy wanted, so he opted out. Because Jesus wants our whole. He wants our all, not just our halfway. Because think about it. Now, there are several things we should not do halfway. If you gave a half effort in swimming, well, you're going to sink. You might drown. If you give a half effort when running away from that wild bear, well, you're going to be lunch. And a half effort, even when you're walking, means you could fall, bonk your head, break your hip, never get to where you're going. And in a test, a half effort means 50%, which we all know is an F. And your mama is not going to like that. And wearing only half of your clothes, well, you get the message. Um, and washing only half of your body means nobody wants to be around you. So think about words also in our language with the word half in them. And none of them are very good. That sure was a half-baked idea of yours. Not very complimentary, because it means you didn't think it out very well. I went to the bar last night and I got half cracked. Well, I sure hope you were drinking Pepsi. And sermon this morning, it was half decent, halfway decent. Well, I definitely would not like that comment, and it means it was somewhat good, but not really. And half pint is described or defined as a small, weak, insignificant person. But if Michael Landon on Little House on the Prairie wanted to call me half pint, I definitely would have allowed it. For those of you too young to remember, he was one good looking man. And I don't mean he was halfway handsome. So you get to my point, you get my point. Following Jesus is not a half hearted part of our lives. So let's go back to those excuses. Tough, 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 tough demands. It's not easy being a wholehearted Christian because dang it, those demands are tough. We need to forgive, love, and pray for our enemies. Serve the least of us, those who are underprivileged, the widow, the orphan, the poor, the abused, the vulnerable, those that are last. All that mirrors and reflects the Son of Man. Number two, God is the first relationship. Jesus wants to put his relationship over all other relationships. And when you think about it, if we don't have Jesus, it's kind of hard to have other relationships. Then we have a total life change. Following Jesus means a total life change because he transforms our minds, our desires, our relationships, and our purpose. No longer are we just working to make ends meet or climbing that social ladder. We know we are called to be a part of something so much bigger. And number four, oh, it takes so much time to be a Christian. I mean, you have to go to church every Sunday, and then the demands of the church are asking you to serve others or to be on such and such committee and Really, do I have to read the Bible every day? I mean, I have other things to do, Jesus. Number five. You know, no one else, nobody else is doing it. I mean, Christians, I admit it, Christians have a reputation of being, well, a bit weird in the media. 
We know the truth. And sometimes it can make people feel like an outcast as being a Christian. And number six, I love God. I love God, but I just don't like organized church. I mean, can't I pray on my own and love God on my own? And why do I need to have anybody else tell me how to do it? Ah. But that community of a church, we all crave it. Just having coffee and donuts together is one part of that community. So there are plenty of excuses when it comes to not believing in Jesus, and all of them should be thrown away. Here's an excuse. I need to get my life in order before I come to Jesus. Well, that's never going to happen. Well, you know, God really can't forgive what I've done. Um, you think you're the only one who has sinned? Well, you know, I really don't need Jesus to forgive me. Oh, really? So, uh, who needs to forgive you? Or this one. Oh, it's too late. It's too late for that Christianity thing. Well, nice try, right? A Christian is someone who puts the will of God and faith in Jesus Christ first. First means first. First does not mean after the people we love. First does not mean after our job and all its demands. First does not mean after our favorite hobbies and sports. First does not mean after our wants and desires. First does not mean after politics or social beliefs we might hold. And first does not mean after we spend our money on what we want. Because first means first. And I don't know about you, but I have a lot, a lot of work to do. Amen.
Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love, through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please join me in our prayers of the church. We pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. We all allow worries and distractions to consume us from time to time. Keep us focused on you and teach us to trust that we will be led step by step through all adversity and challenge. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. May the reminder of our human limitations humble us, but not drive us to despair. May the frailty of this existence compel us to live each day that we are given to the fullest. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us when we don't make time for those who truly need us, O oh Lord and turn us away from our trivial concerns and towards the world around us. Bless all those in need of your healing, especially from those from our faith community, Lori Asmus, Marvin Clemenson, Carrie Leach, Clara Matzenbacher, Augustus Nickley, Alan Oak, Nancy Wickard, Maria Winters. From those outside our community, Gail Bradley, Sean Brueggemann, David Costello, Darla Doctor, Cassidy Virtual Domries, Billiette Harris, Lois Kirk, Jenny Maloney, Terry Olschlager, and Monica Webster. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All the saints who have gone before us now rest in your eternal glory. Make us worthy to join them on that day when we are called to our heavenly home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You hear all your children's prayers and gather the lost into your loving arms. Teach us to put our trust in you and in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now let us pray as our Father has taught us when he said, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And please receive this blessing. Go forth into the world in peace and be of good courage. Hold fast for that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor everyone. Love and serve the Lord rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you all today and for always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.